think we are live. Alrighty, so today's Wednesday. Kristen, I'm here with Ben, and I'm here with Dominica Catelli, one of our uh, favorite restaurants over in Geyserville. So cheers to both of you guys. Welcome, everybody. It's been a day already. Jeez. And today we are sipping our 2017 Laris family Pinot Noir, and we brought, that's exactly how I feel like sipping it. I'm right there with you. This slows me down. Um, but anyways, hi, Ron. So Dominica's here. We uh, we have a Christmas party at the restaurant. I know a lot of our club members go. We got Craig's coming to visit uh, you either tomorrow or this weekend, one of our great club members too. And we challenged you, which obviously, as I look at your history, is not much of a challenge, to make a dish that you thought would pair with the Laris family. So first we're gonna go into your dish and then Ben, I want you to tell us why you think it pairs so well also. Go for it. So uh, we can show that, right? Oh yeah, we can show it. Yeah. Look at your different platings. Mine's like half gone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like how you roll. I can actually show everybody a little better this way. Yes. Nice. There it is. Yes. All righty. Now, Dominica, what is this? So this is a roasted butternut squash, which is from a local, one of our local farms. And it's a butternut squash pasta with a local lamb sausage. And there is thyme and mint in there. The recipe says to use feta. I chose today because I like to mix things up. I'm using the Laura Chanel local goat cheese in there, Parmesan. Um, I did it with a rigatoncini. And for me, these flavors are so fall. And then we have pomegranates growing on our tree here. So there's a, I did a little pomegranate and arugula at the end. And I felt like that was gonna give it a brightness because it is rich. And then with the wine, I love it. I mean, the wine, oh. I can, you can't oh, you you can have, you have a piece of, probably a piece of cardboard and your wine in it, you're gonna be fine because this is so freaking delicious. And I usually do not drink red wine this early in the day, but. Well, welcome it's a, you know, today, a special reason. I need to do it more often because it's making the afternoon much, much less stressful. Indeed. <laughs> Isn't it though? All right, Ben, 17 Laris, tell me a little bit about it. Because well, I'm going to fill my glass. Laris is always shows the earthiness and mineralness of the Russian river. And for me, it's the, the quintessential Russian River Valley Pinot Noir. Uh, this one's a little bit more elegant than normal. This is just 13.5 uh, alcohol. So what really is a very elegant and pretty wine. It shows the, for me, the perfume notes continues on open. And then and then it shows with uh, interplay between sweet and tart red uh, fruit flavors uh, with raspberry, which really sets off with the uh, the pomegranate, uh, picks up those tart notes, and it really shows balance. And then with the lamb, the earthiness of the lamb and the arugula and the uh, goat cheese actually sets off. Now, Nick would be very happy about that being Greek. The lamb and the laris, like, were made for each other anyway. So I think this is, like, just a perfect pairing for our laris 2017. I think you're right too. I think the Laris tends to have a little spice and that spice tends to go with those fall flavors. You were talking about ties it all in there really well. The recipe was just posted on the chat area and it is on our website too. And I will tell you, we love Laura Chanel cheese. They're actually our guest on this next week. Um, oh, amazing. When Ben and I came to lunch at your place, uh, we had your watermelon salad. With well, the cheese and that blueberry. Oh my gosh, that was delicious. Well, this one here with the just the the uh, squash, the earthiness of the squash and that lamb, just really, it's very very balanced plate. It goes really really well with this particular Pinot Noir. Uh, we we thought it would go with salmon or paella or pork, but it does like with grilled peaches or or grilled plums. The uh, the pomegranate sets it off. Though I I'm really uh, jazzed about this combination. I'm gonna get a pomegranate. Um, Dominica, how long have you been cooking, Chefy? Um, basically, probably since I was two or three. I mean, past the 
I mean, I'm past the age of child labor, but they, if I, my parents could have been reported, that might have been a thing. I grew up well, in ben, ben would be in jail with them. Yeah. He had his daughters working bootlegging uh, wine in their garage. So good people in jail sometimes. Yeah. That's you got to do what you got to do. So my grandparents started Catelli's in 1936. And then my dad took over and it was in our family till the late eighties. So I grew up figuring out where to, how to get back in the street. Um, so I grew up here and swore as a young child, I would never go into food. <laughs> Perhaps I would open a toy store at Catelli's. That was it. I didn't get to go to Toys R Us and I wanted to. And so like I told them, well, when I grow up, I'm going to turn it into a toy store. Did you really? That's kind of funny. Oh, yeah. That was that was my my big plan when I was five. That's a good plan. I think I think I like your your decision now though. Yes, it's, I think I made a, a much better choice. So uh, over ten years ago, eleven years ago, my um, brother Nicholas and I got the opportunity to come back to the original space where Catelli started, and we had always wanted to come back to Guys Around the Community, and so we got to do that. And here we are, eleven. Yeah, just a, it'll next spring will be eleven years since we reopened. So your grandparents opened the restaurant, your dad ran it, and then it closed. I'm not from here, so forgive me. So then it closed down for X amount of time. Was it anything in between? Yeah, there was a wonderful restaurant that was here named Santi. And then um, a lot of our fabulous chefs in Sonoma County actually were there from um, Ari at uh, Campo Fina and Liza at Spencer Sisters, Dino at Diavola. All of they came from this kitchen. So I feel like this land itself like breeds cooking and connection and great chefs. Um, Dustin Vallette from Vallette's in Hillsburg. He worked at Catelli's when he was in high school. So there's, it's a, got a really great history in this space. However, there was, Santi was here, they moved to Santa Rosa and we got the chance in 2010 when they did to come back to be in the original space. So I moved back to California and my brother and I and um, my husband, we all came to reopen this old uh, family history. Well, we're happy about that because this is uh, the place where, where Papa Pietro Perry Winery celebrates uh, with their whole team on uh, Christmas. Yeah. We've loved being able to, to do that. This year might be a little little different on our... Yeah. It is, our, but our now, our, you guys have a fantastic patio of where you are sitting right now. And I used to joke that my complaint about dining in uh, in this Hillsburg area where there weren't enough patios. I got my wish clearly. But your patio is fantastic. And you were even staying in the heat of the summer. You would never have the patio open normally, but it was packed. Yep. With right. the, where we are in Sonoma County, we still cannot dine indoors. And we have this, normally we can sit 150 people out here and that's not the case, but we have 12 tables on our main patio where I am right now. And then we have a garden area that we just use for events. But now we have nine tables up in that area because obviously we haven't been able to do gatherings um, of any size. So we had the opportunity to use that space differently this summer. And so we're really grateful for that. And did our, did our chef, Jim May, get married at Catelli's? Yes. We <laughs> have his, yeah, Jim May was, pro, so his wife, Donnell, is my mom's goddaughter. So we have all this history and overlap. And they got married up in the garden area and we're here. So that's another Papa Pietro connection. I tell you, you know, you think the wine business is incestuous. Obviously, the restaurant business has some incestuousness going on. And then we all connect. But good food, good wine, I mean, Ow, that's what it's all about. I spent a lot of time in the kitchen. Um, I From 65 to 71, I was an army cook. <laughs> oh, wow. I cooked for hundreds, if not thousands of people. And uh, it was always, I grew up in an Italian family uh, in San Francisco in the Mission District and uh, very close around the corner to my grandparents where we had huge parties and, and everybody cooked. I mean, that was just all part of the thing. You were either you cooked or you did something in the kitchen. You you carried stuff or you set stuff or cleaned stuff. But you're always popular. Ben's a great chef, and I also understand, Dominica, that you've done iron. You've been a judge on Iron Chef. 
I have. I've been a judge on Iron Chef a few times, and I've judged on Guys Grocery Games and competed on that show many times as well. And, wow. and just a little insider scoop for all of you people out there who like to watch food shows. And I, the first time I judged Iron Chef, and when you're on that, when you're at home, you're judging as well, right? So everybody who's watching a show like that, you're 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 in your judge show or seat. And you're like, why are they doing that? How did this? And the first time I actually competed, I'm like, oh, that's what's happening because you're there's so much adrenaline and everything goes so fast and it's in real time. You lose your mind and things that you think are happening or you think that you're doing, you're not. So when you're at home going, that's ridiculous. Duh. Why don't they do that? It's because you can't. Yeah, I was like blind. I literally salt in front of me on one show and I was like, I stole my salt. I know he did. I know he, and it was never left the table. But I couldn't see it because I was so amped up. So, all right, two questions for you on that. Did the shows portray you? Did you like how they portrayed you? Because I know they can edit. Um, I don't know. Are you a crazy chef? Do you throw dishes? Do you throw pans? No, no, that's not my. No. That's not our. Um, no, I mean, I, I can't say people in my family and maybe the people would say differently about being crazy. So I won't. I. But yeah, our, like our culture here and what our goal was is there's that's not part of the scene. There's no throwing stuff. There. That's a whole so much um, drama and also we're a team and I don't feel like that's a team building and I'm an amazing team and we couldn't do this without them. So yeah, I can't. I've been to Kelly's. No. I've been there multiple times. I used to just like to sit at the bar and uh, everyone's always been so. Are you surprised, Ben? Everyone's no, always been. Not really. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> always so happy. What? I just said, yeah, probably that fits in perfectly. I don't like to sit at the table. I like chatting with the bartenders. I love sitting. Uh, sitting at a bar is my favorite. Like if I go out to eat and there's a table or the bar, I would. I like to sit at the bar. I like to see what's going on. Talk to the you know bartender. I'm with you on that, Kristen. I would just say the one thing though, as a bar hopper for many years. It's always disgusting to go in a bar and find no seat for the guy that's drinking a cocktail. And it's all... Because yeah. people are eating? Yeah, well, you know, it's hard to have a cocktail when somebody's eating on the bar, right? I don't, I've don't. i never found a problem with it. That's years and years of experience. Well, when we get to open the bar again, you're welcome to just come have a cocktail. We have plenty of people who do that. I'm looking forward to it. I do. And you have a ton of regulars. Who we do. Our tender, we've we've drank with him many, many years in different places. One of your bartenders has been all over uh, Fieldsburg. And um, I, I'm sorry, I don't remember his name, but he was he's quite a, a fixture and he makes great cocktails. Do you make good well, cocktails? I think we've got, again, we've got a great team that's in there and – uh, I cannot wait for the day that we're able to have people back and be around. So that community of of locals, of that's how we grew up, is the people who, you know, were, this is, Sonoma County is the wine industry, and it's, you know, the ranchers and the farmers, and they would come after work or during lunch, and they would be here, and that is what we built on. As come, When we came back, it's like, that's what, how we grew up, that's what we wanted, we wanted people to feel like they could come here for a special occasion or just for a burger and for lunch or in the you know middle of the week. It's a place for comfort, good food that's made with love. And if you want to have a big party and you want to be, have it be a fancy night, we can do that too. You, you actually do. You're right. You hit all those targets. You can go in casual, you can go in fancy. Your food's always been spectacular. So on Iron Judging, just curious, have there ever been any horrible dishes that you've judged and or what was the hardest thing you had to include in with your cooking? Oh, so for the, on the judging for me, one of the episodes was chocolate, but it was, it was a Valentine's ish, issue or episode, but it was all savory things. So the oh. food was so rich and so, and there's, I didn't, Taste myself right, and there was some things, and I don't like white chocolate at all. And that was in a bunch of the dishes. And I was like, sea bass with a white chocolate foam, and this and that. And I'm just like, and not that it was made wrong, but it was like literally going. I was like, I had a food hangover, and that was 
very intense. It's not <laughs> <That didn't sound laughs> even though the chefs did a great job with what they had to work with, it was not something that was not a, a fun one to judge. And then as far as what was the other question as far as the competition? Have you, have you, what have some, been some ingredients you've had to use that stumped you? Oh my gosh. Well, grocery games is tough because they're always about throwing some crazy thing in the loop. Like it's like it's this and this, and then it's something ridiculous. Like one of like not the ingredient, but one of the hardest was I got paired with someone I didn't know. And with it, like they drew our names, we had to work together and they handcuffed us together to grocery shop and then start cooking. So I'm with a total stranger and you have one hand and you have to do everything. It was so like stressful we ended up becoming like do, like totally friends and we did great and we won that episode so it worked out but that was one of the worst and then there was my i think one of my first ones i had to make a comfort food dish it was like oh, okay pasta this and that and then they gave the what had to be in it and it was like food and something else and then it was like a radish and a watermelon. It was like everything was thrown out the door from like, I was thinking you know, warm, comforting pasta and everything got funky. No. But we worked through it. And does, does your mind automatically start cycling through when you get ingredients on what pairs, what goes well, where you want to go with something? Do you have a specialty? Um, the part of the first question of what goes through my mind, I have a weird thing. I feel like food, this is, here comes the crazy part, um, that food talks to me. So if I like see an arugula, if I'm going through the store and something, oops, I can't figure out where the camera is there. So if it's arugula and a pomegranate, it might be, I start hearing things in my head, like do this with it, do this with it. Or if I open my refrigerator and there's four ingredients in there, all it'll start like vibrating and saying, oh, this could be this, this could be that. So that's how it comes together. And really my one of my hardest most challenging things as a chef is when people ask me for uh they want to know a recipe or a menu any more than 27 seconds before i have to do it yeah if anybody who works with me knows it's like literally thinking about drives me crazy it's like we're gonna we're gonna do an event in seven months what are you gonna make i'm like just let me do it yeah <laughs> just let me go because if i say that when I'm that day up, i might get some ingredient that's so perfect for it they usually have like a asterisk loophole that is this is what it is. However, if something shows up that's going to be, I feel like it's going to be better for that dish, then that's that's what it is. And so specialty, I think my specialty is that, is taking what is given to me in the moment and creating something unexpected out of it. At Catelli is what we're known for. One of my dishes that we've um, been known for is our 10 layer lasagna. So handmade pasta, paper thin, it's like this tall, melts in your mouth. Kale salad. I was one of the, I think the first person around here to get kale on the menu. And it was a proselytizer of it. Now it's like a normal thing. And I'm really happy about that. I like getting people to eat things that they thought they didn't like. And That's it. It. I don't like kale, but I like your kale salad and I'll eat your kale salad any day. Yeah. I have one of those. And I went to the restaurant and my girlfriend Willa was like, you have to have the kale salad. I was like, you order it. I'll have a bite. I'll do my due diligence. Delicious. Now I get it every time. So, well done. Thank you very much. And I'm thank you for trying. That's my rule. I tell kids and adults, you think you don't like it, you got to take a bite. You may not have had it in this way. Ben. One of the things I think about the most, uh, uh, some of the best chefs and people that cook are spontaneous. They see something. It doesn't. They don't have to follow anything. They just know. Jeez, I got that fresher, and I shopped for years. Every day I'd go to it when I worked in San Francisco with my little ice chest. I would go during my lunch break and just shop at a few different places, whatever looked fresh. And uh, and I did that for years, and it's served me well. Spontaneity is 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 really important when you're a cook. So you guys are excellent at that. I am terrified to do that. I am a recipe person. I will look at it 10 times and make sure I did the correct quarter cup. I'm so terrified, I don't know why, to just don't worry about it. Yeah. And I don't trust myself that way. I so admire both you and also, I don't know if it's a coincidence, but you both are way better chefs and cooks than I am. 
<laughs> well, I want to encourage you, Kristen, and I tell everyone this. Like, my first cookbook, Mom Malicious, was like a labor of love, and it was about getting you know, easy recipes in the hands of busy moms and families. And I had someone test the recipes who wasn't a chef, who was like, like, say, how easy is this? What do you need to know? What needs to be done differently? And one of the things it says in there that I want people to do is feel free to like improvise, do that. So Kristen, do that next time, see what happens. Because I could just tell you from the recipe that we have online as well, anybody who sees it, if they're listening to this, you don't have to follow it exactly. It's meant to go, you know, if you only have one of one herb, just do a bunch of that herb. If you want to add more, I would, for me, I would bump it up. I would say, put more, add some chili flakes. If you don't have lamb sauces or you think you don't like lamb, use a different sauces. It's going to be all good. It's fine. Maybe I need to hear that. Of this. Yeah. So just, yeah, let that go. All right. It's all right. I want you to do it. You report back to me. Just to, like go with the flow of it. You're like, I got more of this, and then take and always taste. Don't like while you're cooking. I taste as I go along. Like there is something that because sometimes you might have an herb, like basil might be stronger and it's from a certain place at a certain time. So you don't need it, or you need more. If you're getting some winter and they're not and they're grown in a hot house and they were pick green, they're you're gonna might need five tomatoes instead of one if you're making something with a one of tomato flavors. So just give yourself that chance to game on. Challenge accepted. Well, I just want to say, you know, this beautiful plate, I just dying to dig into it. Oh, go. It's gonna be ice cool now. It's a pasta salad, Ben. We pour wine at a lot of events, and so we're always – and usually they serve food at the events. The very most difficult thing in the world to do is to go grab something to eat and try to pour wine to people. So I'm sitting here struggling, looking at the plate of pasta, and you put it in your mouth and start chewing. You look like so – good. I'm just going to drink the wine, and then I'm going to dive into that right after this program is over. You can have a bite now. the rules. I just did it. Don't talk with your mouth full. Yeah, I, There's I'm freedom. Trained. I'm trained. I've been doing this for, for pouring wines for 20 years commercially, and you just seem – I have yeah, a hard – When have we ever been interacting like this? So now there is a new freedom. You can actually – you can eat because you're in the privacy of your home with yeah. everybody online watching you. There's only like maybe 700 people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Craig who's a great club member who calls us every, he usually calls or chats with us a couple of days previous to Wednesday, if not the day of, to ask what we're making. He's coming to your place tomorrow at noon for lunch. Hopefully, oh, Craig, someone in your group is getting this butternut squash um, pasta. Oh, yep. We're putting it on. So the this pasta dish, if you're at Catelli's tomorrow through the weekend, unless we run out before then, is going to be on with this amazing your amazing wine. So we're doing the pasta special wine special um, by the glass. So that will be at Catelli's starting Thursday. Wow. That's tomorrow, folks. That's tomorrow. As well. um, talk to me about this mom delicious cookbook and having your daughter eat veggies. <laughs> so what I found out, after, my and just so you know, my daughter's now 25. So I wrote the, the book uh, a few years ago. You have a 25 year old? I do. So we wrote, yeah, so the book came out in 2008, 2009. I can't, I'm bad with math. Anyways, uh, what I find and what my philosophy was, and I've seen it work for so many other parents when we do this, is don't ask. So if you say to your kids after school, do you want to have some carrot sticks? You know, this, I'm going to say yes. So you put these beautiful veggies out with a great dip, whether it's a hummus or we have a, like a riff on a ranch in there that's made with, you know, kefir and herbs, but it tastes really similar. They're getting protein, they're getting probiotics. It would always get polished off. They're hungry. That's the prime time to go. Like to, if you put food in front of them and it's colorful and it's got flavor and it's got texture. And then also if you have kids out there, the other thing I did when since she was young with other kids is when you're in the store, engage them in that, I, engage them in produce. So it's like pick something red, pick something green. So that there's different things that they try and then you go by the color and have some be vegetables some be fruits. And then that really starts to build this relationship. I feel like with food 
that is so important. And my nieces and nephews and daughter and kids that are now adults and went through college, they are such great eaters and they love vegetables. And I really find that's because of how we started, what we built the what we built them um, their base off. Were you also um, huge difference? I'm from Florida. Let me just okay. state that out there. No offense to Floridians out there, but we don't have that farm to table that mm -hmm. organic. That wasn't yeah. a big thing when I was there. I've been in California for like 20 years. So yeah, it's only I'm to table. But mm -hmm. yeah, I grew up, I didn't, I canned beets. I mean, I grew up with oh, groceries. Yeah. I wouldn't eat. But the farm, I remember having my first farm raised tomato. Holy crap, delicious mm -hmm. compared yeah. to what's in the stores. I know, I don't get out much. Really? People. But, so, what part of Italy is your family from? What part of Italy is your family from? Not me. From oh, Florida. got it. So they're from um, Tuscany, from Luca, Via Reggio, and Massarossa. Ben, where's your family from? So we're from uh, Basilicata and uh, Calabria, so southern Italy. Okay. But we spent yeah. a lot of time traveling in both areas, and uh, the food in Italy is amazing. So yeah, it is. I miss, uh, miss it. it. But I want to go back to what Kristen said about this, the, what you grew up with and the difference. Because when we moved to Chicago and I was had to go through Chicago winter and my friend, one of my daughter's best friends, she was five years old, went over there to have and had strawberries and they put a bowl of white sugar next to the strawberries and she didn't know what to do. So she ate the strawberries and licked her finger and dipped it into the sugar separate. So you didn't know that people put those things in there. It was like, they'll just eat the strawberries. But the difference in produce because of the time of year, you don't have a you know, farmer's market year round, but really throughout the country, because I've traveled throughout the country for work and go to the you know regular grocery store. I always want to go to like the store that's like the bigger store that most people shop at. And I find now you can find everything, good places, everything that's really um, it's not that, you know, it's not like going to the farmer's market in Hillsburg on a Saturday morning. Sure. But there's still things year round. There's much more awareness. I, 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 it was mainly like uh, onions and potatoes in, in wintertime, onions, potatoes, celery, Carrots. and a few other things, and, and nothing. And today, um, when you get into the late season, you can find fruits and vegetables from everywhere. I mean, it's amazing. But growing up, we didn't have the access to it. You know, it was very, very limited. The produce market kind of closed down, and there was four rows of boxes of potatoes, and, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So. I grew up, I'm going to go see you say that. I grew up eating sugar on the Sugar on a cantaloupe? We cut the cantaloupe, we put sugar on it, and that's how we ate it. And I came out here, I don't think I see both of your guys' expressions. And when I came out here, I tried it without sugar. It was delicious. And I eat it now, and I'm like, how? Why yeah. would you put sugar on a cantaloupe? No, I don't put anything on it. I just eat the cantaloupe because it's delicious. <laughs> what winter vegetables are grown locally? Here question? in our in Sonoma County? Yeah. What winter vegetables? Uh, uh, everything from you know the leafy greens, the chards, the kales, potatoes, um, the winter squashes, so oh. butternut, delicata. So you get this mixture of like sweet and bitter. And um, yeah, it's not summer but the this is a funny season right now too i would find going from summer into fall because the weather is here in the morning it feels like winter it's so it's you know 45 degrees i mean sorry for all of you and who are actually in places that are zero degrees but for 45 degrees feels really cold and, and, then we'll have the in the afternoon. and we still have tomatoes at the end of the season and then we have the winter like we start having the winter veg and coming up as well. So it's this integration between the two seasons right now. I plant fobbies now, the next full moon, we plant fobbies, so we'll have them just before spring. So we, we love oh, that's so good. And I don't like beans. Uh, Ron and Wendy are both saying they put salt or sea salt on their cantaloupe. I oh, I go. That's so good because when you have a little bit of salt to the sweet, it actually adds into the flavoring. I love so that. Salt, watermelon, salt on, you can't get that. 
good salt, not the little girl yeah. who's in her underwear salt. Yeah. And a little bit of, you know, kosher Malden salt on there. It's kind of like when you have a margarita and you have salt on the rim, right? It's the balance. I do like that. I gave up the salt for margaritas and straight without salt. You no, know, as you get older, you can't, you know, you're intaking salt. Ben, you also gave up the margarita mix and the limes, and you're just straight tequila. That was, yeah. you're, yeah. you're right. Yeah. <laughs> and I have I'm, a good one. I've worked too. I know I'm right. That's hilarious. All right. Well, our half hour is up. Is that crazy? You know. How quick that is. Well, Julia Papa Pietro, Ben's daughter, posted she wants to go to Catelli. So, Julia, you and I are going to find time to go this weekend because um, we're going to eat this again and drink that again. Yep. What? You got to take the boys. I want to have fun. Take this boy. <laughs> Girl date night's different. Girl date night's different. What? Bring you a different I'm going to bring you a different Pinot because, you know, we make 10 of them. And we're going to, well, you already have our Russian River, yeah. I think, on your list. Mm -hmm. okay. We love it. Yeah. So yeah. then we'll have, yeah, you have the opportunity if you're coming into Catelli's to have this and then the other one that's on our wine list. So yeah. coming in for dinner, go it, for two. Two, two for two. Oh, back two and go two. Go for two. Yeah. Try the two. Chuck Woolery. Yeah. Uh, oh, my sister says she needs to take her sister. Well, you live in Florida and you're probably still putting sugar on your cantaloupe. So we can't talk to you. That's my sister. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can. Come here. We can help rehabilitate you. Yeah. All right, Jennifer, game on. All right, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you all. Absolutely love your restaurant. And um, we it's love a your good wine. Great morning. You did a great job. Thank you so much. And Dominica, the best thing is once I jump off live, we can all sit here and still drink for a second. Cheers, everybody. Sorry. Cheers. Thank you.